Hello everyone! So today's video is going to be a little bit different than normal videos. So instead of introducing a new topic, we're going to actually apply some knowledge that we already have to make a project. And this project will involve water level detection. So we're going to have a sensor and that sensor will detect how much water is in a container. And we're also going to have to have a web application. And in the web application, there's going to be a diagram, some text. It's going to be really fun. So let's check it out. So in today's video, first of all, I'll just show you guys what the project actually is and we'll go in depth on what we're going to do today. And then I'll show you all the hardware that we're going to be using, including the ultrasonic sensor and the rest of the hardware, including the Raspberry Pi. And then we'll get straight into the demo, in which first I'll show you how to do the circuits and the hardware. And then we're going to get onto the actual code and then we'll just test it out. So first, let's introduce what we're, our project is going to be. So water level detection. So we're going to have a container, and then at the top of the container, like almost at the lid, there's going to be a little hole there. And in the hole, we're going to have an ultrasonic sensor. And an ultrasonic sensor just detects how far or close things are from it. So it's going to detect how far or close the water level is in the container. So then we'll have some data to use. And then we'll create a Flask application. And in the Flask application, we will have a diagram of a water tank there. And the diagram will fill up water inside of the tank based on the real water level in the container. And then also we'll just print the water level on the screen just so that we can have some reference. So now let's check out the hardware. So first of all, let's show you guys the ultrasonic sensor. So an ultrasonic sensor senses distance between the sensor and then whatever object is in front of it. And then it'll, in this case, we're going to keep it at the top of the container, look facing downwards, so that if we pour water into the container, then the water level will rise and then that'll get closer to the sensor so that we'll have a higher water level. And here are the other hardware and items needed. So I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, but you can use any Raspberry Pi or any circuit that connects to an ultrasonic sensor. And the, the place I got the ultrasonic sensor from, I used the SunFounder Raspberry Pi sensor kit, but you can use any sensor kit that includes the ultrasonic sensor. And then just so that we can connect all of the sensors together, I'm using a breadboard and jumper cables. And also you're going to need to have the container that you can fill up water inside. So now let's check out the steps we can use in order to make our water level detection project. So here are the steps. First of all, we're going to have to do the hardware and we're going to have to keep the ultrasonic sensor at the top of the bottle and all of that. And then we'll first just get the distance and then maybe like print it out on the terminal screen. And then we'll just create the flask application. And at first, we're not going to do the diagram thing. We're just going to print the distance, which is what we printed on the terminal screen. We're just going to print the water level on the HTML. And then finally, we'll create the diagram, and then it'll fill up water based on the water level. And then it'll have an animation of filling up water based on how much water is in the real life tank. So yeah, now that you know all about water level detection, let's actually get to the demo and use this knowledge. All right guys, so this is our circuit right here. So this is the container that we're filling up water with. And as you can see, we have our ultrasonic sensor at top. And I just put some tape over just so that the ultrasonic sensor gets protected from any water, but it can still be filled up with water inside the container. And there's a lid at the bottom so that we can take out water. And then next to the ultrasonic sensor, we have a cable connecting to our circuit. And I'll post the link for the circuit in the description below. But basically, I just got it from the SunFounder user manual. And finally, here we have it connected to the Raspberry Pi. And then that's back to the container. So yeah, we're going to be filling up this container with water. And then the ultrasonic sensor will sense the water level from that. So let's get to the code. All right, so now that we've finished the circuits, let's actually get to the demo. So first of all, I'm j I've just remoted into my Raspberry Pi in through VNC Viewer, and I have opened my folder structure. So I have my app.py right here, and we're gonna write all of our Python code here. And I also have an index.html and a picture, but that'll come for later. First of all, let's just focus on 
actually getting the distance from the ultrasonic sensor. So first of all, let's just import all our modules. So I'm going to import the time module for its time.sleep function. And obviously, since we're using Flask today, I'm going to from Flask import star. And then also, I'm going to import the RPI, which is Raspberry Pi, dot GPIO, which is basically just the general purpose input output board. And that's just going to get all of our circuits into the program. And we're going to import it as GPIO, just so that we can say GPIO every single time. And then finally, we're going to import date time. So from date time, import date time. All right, let's go. So this is all of the imports. And then for the setup, oh, this is not supposed to be called that, okay. Okay, so for the setup, obviously since this is a Flask app, uh, we're going to have our app equals Flask and then underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore. And if you don't understand all of this Flask stuff, you can check out my other video on introduction to Flask and then that will give you a little more background on Flask and how to use it. So now I'm going to paste in one function that we're going to create, and this function is called setup. And what this setup function is going to do, it's basically just going to set up our ultrasonic sensor so that it can actually get inputs. And then the next code I'm going to paste is another function. And let's just paste this in. So this function is called distance. And by the way, I'm getting some of this code, like for example, these functions. I'm just getting these from the manual that I got from the SunFounder kit. And the SunFounder kit, it has like little instructions and code for each sensor. So I'm using the ultrasonic sensor version of that. And this is the distance function. And what this distance function is going to do, if I paste in the whole code, then it's just going to get it's going to continuously get the distance between the ultrasonic sensor and then whatever object is in front of it over and over again. And then we can use that data to fill up our water tank. So let's just paste in the rest of this. So here we go. And then this is indented wrong. So let's paste, I mean, backspace. And sorry if the colors are like a little bit laggy. That's just the Raspberry Pi. It's a single board computer. So all right, there we go. And now that we have our distance function ready, and this distance function, like I said, I just got it from the instruction manual from our SunFounder Raspberry Pi kit. And this will be available in the description below if you wanna download this code. So basically after that, now what we want to do is actually print this out and then we're going to create a Flask web page. So to render this, on our Flask web page, I have our index.html here. And basically that's, first of all, that's in the templates folder and that's why it's showing up. So in our index.html, I just have a little bit of CSS and then I just have a div class. And basically what that's doing is we just have an image of a water tank and then I'll show you the image of the water tank. So we have this water tank image, but there's also a rectangle inside of it. And then that's going to be our progress bar that's gonna fill up. So that's just all that there's in the HTML. But right now, we're not going to use that yet. First of all, we're just going to print out the distance continually. And let's just do it as like the h1 tag. So here we have our h1 tag. And instead of that, Flask uses a templating language called Jinja that works with HTML. So that right in HTML, we can just do double curly braces and then we can use Jinja too. And then that will work with Flask also. So here we can paste in our, we can type in our variable name and then we can use that same variable name in our app.py, which is really cool. So before we do all that, let's just create our app.route. So I'm gonna say app at app.route and then we're going to have parentheses here. And then since I want this to be the main route of the web page, I'm going to say slash here. So we're going to define a function called index, and then this will just act as our main index.html. So now I have this distance function that basically it just gets the distance between the ultrasonic sensor and the object in front of it, which in this case is the water level because it's rising. So I have the distance function, but I'm not using it yet. So let's just put that distance function, we can call it in a variable, let's call it like dis. And then that will be equal to, and then we can call the distance function. Wow, I really misspelled that, okay. 
distance. There we go. Okay, there we go. So now our distance function, which gets the distance continually, that's in our dis function, or dis variable, sorry. And also, before, before we do that, I've initialized our setup ver function, and that setup function, before we can use any of the distance functions and anything related to the ultrasonic sensor, we need to set up our ultrasonic sensor. So we're going to call the setup function in that app.route. So here we can just call the setup function. So there we go. And then after we have our dis here, then I'm going to render the index.html and then in the index.html as the h1 tag, I want it to show this distance. So whenever you print out the distance as just like this, it has a long decimal because it wants to be as accurate as possible, but I don't need that. I just want to round it to like, for example, the nearest uh, one. So I'm going to create another variable called dis round because we want to round this up to the nearest one. And then we're going to use the round function, and then we're just going to apply it to this dis here. So there we go, dis round. And then now we can actually return our render template, and then we want to render our index.html. So render template, and then index.html. And just a reminder, this index.html, it won't show up unless it's in the templates folder. And also, since I'm using this water tank.jpg, later on in the video I'll explain this, but that also has to be in a different folder, and I'll explain that also. So back to the app.py. Since we're returning the index.html, then we also want to use this dis round. We want to use this dis round as our h1 tag here. So let's just, in h1, you need to have two curly braces, which is Jinja, Jinja syntax. And then we're just going to say dis round because that's the variable name. And then we'll go back to app.py. And in that, we need to mention that we're using this dis round variable in our HTML. So I'm going to say dis as an argument there. I'm going to say dis round, which is the variable name, equals dis round. And then that's just saying that this dis round variable, that's equal to the dis round in index.html and you can change the names but i just wanted to keep it the same for simplicity so there we go and then let's save this and then let's save the index.html and then yeah now what it has to do it should get the distance between the ultrasonic sensor and any object in front of it which in this case it would be the water level and then it should print that as the h1 tag in our html so let's test this out all right, so I'm gonna go to terminal to run this code. So let's go over to terminal and then here we go. So I'm already in the correct folder and I've set my flask app as app.py. So I'm just gonna say flask run and then it should run our server. And there we go. So it started running our server. And now what we'll have to do is we're gonna go to, first of all, we're gonna copy this URL. So let's press copy URL, and then we're going to go to Chromium, which is basically Raspberry Pi's version of Chrome. And then we're going to paste it in, and then hit enter. And then we should see our variable div round, or not div round. And there we go. So it's showing 28 centimeters now. And let's just pour some water in just for reference. So I'm going to take in the water here. And now let's pour it into our container. And now it should decrease. All right, so it's not decreasing because we have to reload the page. So if we reload it, then there we go. Now it's only 19 because as you can see, there's water inside. So now the water level is closer to the ultrasonic sensor right here. So now it's 19. And then if we took out some water, then it would increase again and like that. So there we go. All right, so now that we're finished with the simple stuff, which is just adding it as the H1 tag, Next, let's actually fill up our water tank with water in our flask page based on how much water is in our container in real life. 
So first of all, let me just explain to you guys the formula on how we can do this. And if you're not interested on in the formula, then you can just skip ahead. And let's just say that this is our container right here. This is not the actual container that I'm using, but let's just say this. This is our container. And the ultrasonic sensor would be placed on the top here, look facing downwards. And also let's say that this is 27 centimeters, which is the height of my real container. So that's why the reading on the Flask web page was 27 or 28. It may not always be accurate. And that's why it was 28 centimeters, because that's how tall it was, and then it was seeing the bottom of the container. So, we want to convert that 27 centimeters to how many pixels are in this water tank image, so that we can fill it up based on how many centimeters of water are in the real tank. So let's go back to index.html, and let's scroll down here. So, as you can see, we have two div tags. Oh, it's gone. Okay, sorry, it's lagging. Okay, so we have two div tags. So, we have line 2 and line 1. And let's go back to our thing. So, we have two rectangles here, which is the blue rectangle and the gray rectangle. And the blue rectangle represents the water being filled up. But right now, it's just stuck at one place. So, that blue rectangle represents line 2 div tag and then the line one is the gray rectangle so if we go up to the styling then as you can see we have the height of both of them so we want to dynamically change that based on how much water is in the real tank so as you can see it both of them add up to 260 pixels so the it shouldn't exceed 260 pixels. And we want to convert that 260 pixels to the 27 centimeters in our container. So how can we do that? So I'm going to go to a Google Sheet just to explain it to you guys. So here, let's just make like percentages. So one, two, like that. And then let's just add that all the way to 100 so that we can have percentage. So first of all, I'm going to convert the 27 centimeters to percentage and then we're going to convert the percentage to the pixels just so that it's simpler all right let's drag this all the way to 101 because we started from zero or no 102 there we go all right there we go so now we have our percentages and i'm going to convert our 27 centimeters into percentages and how I'm going to do that first of all if we place our ultrasonic sensor at the top then I'm not gonna pour water all the way until it touches the ultrasonic sensor and because becomes zero centimeters so instead of that I'm going to stop pouring the water once it's three centimeters away because I don't want to get the ultrasonic sensor wet so how I can still have three till 27 centimeters and then convert that to a percentage we have to start from three here and then go all the way until we have a hundred percent so just so that i don't have to keep on typing it for every single one i'm going to add a formula so we're going to say equal to and then three plus because we want to add three three centimeters since we're starting the ultrasonic sensor from three so three plus and then let's click on or no no not that and then let's click on this one this percentages and then times 0.24. So the point, the decimal is there because it's a percentage. And then 24 instead of 27 because you're, we want to subtract 3 from the 27 centimeters because we're not using all 27. We're, like I said, I'm not pouring water until it touches the ultrasonic sensor. So we want to subtract 3 centimeters from it so that we can stop the pouring once it's 3 centimeters away. And that'll still be considered 100%. So we're going to press enter here, and then it says 3.24. So I'm just going to drag this all the way down until we get to 100%. So let's go all the way to 100%. There you go. And as you can see, it finishes perfectly on 27 centimeters. So now we know, for example, let's say 10% of the graph, that'll be 5.4 centimeters of the container. So now we have a understanding of each percentage and then how much centimeters it has. But we want to convert these percentages to the 260 pixels that we have in the water tank.jpg or in the rectangles that we're using. So 
to do that we're going to use another formula and this time we're going to start this one at zero because it can be zero pixels if it's fully empty like for example if it's 27 inches away from our ultrasonic sensor that means that the water tank is empty so we would have zero pixels and then just like that we want to go all the way until 100 percent full is 260 pixels because that would be fully full on the graph so how we can do that again i'm going to use a formula here and that formula let's say equal to no, let's say equal to here and then again i'm going to press the percentage because we're converting the percentage to the 260 pixels and then i'm going to say times 2.6 and why it's 2.6 i'm dividing the 260 pixels by 10 because this is percentages so let's just press enter here and then now it's 2.6 and then again we can just drag that all the way over until it's 100 percent and then that should 100 percent that should be 260 and there we go so now we have each percentage and then its corresponding amount of pixels. And then we also have it side by side with our centimeters. So let's say the water is 5.4 centimeters. In this case, it would be 27 minus 5.4 centimeters. Then it would be 26 pixels we have to fill up the water level. And then just like that, we can do that for any other water level, any other percentage. So that's the formula to how we can do this. So let's actually implement that into our program. So I'm going to app I'm going to go to app.py again and then inside of our app.route, let's go back here. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to take out this dis round variable and then I'm going to take it out here also. All right. And first of all, what we want to do, we want to convert our data that we're in getting in and then we're going to convert that to a percentage and then we're going to convert that percentage to the amount of pixels we need and then we're going to take that pixels and then we're going to actually put it into the graph so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take i'm going to make a variable and let's call this variable percent and then that percent variable will be equal to and then I'm going to make a math operator. And then I'm going to use our dis variable and then minus three. And I'm going to use the same function. I'm going to use the same formula that we used here, except instead of plus three, we're going to say minus three. And then instead of times 0.24, we're going to divide by 0.24. Because let's say this is our container again, and the ultrasonic sensor is at the top. So let's say this is the water level. Then the ultrasonic sensor will see this much it'll see this much and then let's say this is five centimeters so it'll say that this is five centimeters but in reality the water level is actually like let's say this is 15 centimeters so we want to flip that just so that we get the actual water level so instead of plus three it's minus three and then we're going to say divided by 0.24 just like before and then we want to convert this to the two lines, or the two rectangles, sorry. So for example, this is our flask cap. So we have one rectangle and then two rectangles. So first let's make the blue rectangle because that one's simpler. So I'm gonna call this maybe like blue line. And then I'm going to say, I'm going to use the round function again because I don't want to uh, have a long decimal because that might not convert into the pixels. So round, and then we're going to use our percent variable and then times 2.6, just like before. So now this will convert it to a pixelated amount. And then there we go. And then the the gray line the gray rectangle the blue rectangle let's say this is any amount that will be calculated then we just want to make the gray rectangle the opposite of the inverse of that and since we're only going to make it 260 pixels high then we can just say 260 pixels minus and then this the value of this blue line so let's say gray line and then that will be equal to 260 minus and then blue line just so that it gets the inverse of that, and then that can be the gray line. All right, there we go. So now we want to actually set this blue line and gray line as our height for the index.html. So 
let's go back to our index.html. So I'm going to take out the 210 here. And since this line two, this is the blue rectangle. So I'm going to add our variable here. Or no, sorry, we need to have ginger here. So let's do the double curly braces. And then one, two. And then here, we're going to add our variable blue rectangle. Or no, I think it was called blue line. Let's check that. Sorry, I forgot. Yeah, blue line, okay. So blue line. And then we're going to keep the pixels because this is still pixelated. And then let's add our double curly braces. And then here we would have gray line. And then we have our PX here. And then since this is continuously changing, like for example, if I pour in some water, then the value will change. So if we don't reload our site, then it'll just keep the same thing. So let's just make it so that it'll continuously reload the site over and over again, like maybe every 0.5 seconds or something. So how we can do that in the head, I'm going to add a JavaScript function. All right, so let me paste it in. So I'm going to say paste right here. And then it should paste. There we go. Okay, so we have our JavaScript. And what this is doing, it's just opening up the... It's just opening it up and then closing it, which is basically reloading the page over and over again. So it's going to do that. And now we have our height and we have our height as our blue line and gray line. And there we go. Now it's fully ready to be functional. All right, so we're just going to go to terminal here. And then again, it's just flask run because we've set up everything else and it should run on this server. So we're going to copy the URL and then let's open it up in Chromium. All right, okay, let's open up Chromium and then we're going to paste in the URL and then it should start working. All right, so let's paste this in and then open it up. And then there we go. So it's showing it's empty right now, but if I, and as you can see, it's a reloading, but if I take water from this bucket and then pour it in here, then as you can see, it's filling up. And it's filling up gradually as we add more water because we're, it's getting inputs from the ultrasonic sensor. And as you can see, it's not very accurate, but it's lagging sometimes. But if we add more water, then yeah, it's filling up even more. And then let's add even more water. And even in the diagram, it's filling up because it's getting real-time inputs from the ultrasonic sensor. And then there we go. And then one last scoop, let's fill it up even more. And then it actually works. There we go, that worked. All right, so this topic was a fun one. And I just wanted to point out that all of the measurements that I used, like for example, the 27 centimeters, etc., that only applies to my container that I used. So you'll have to measure out your own container and there'll be different formulas for you. So this is all you have to make it custom. And also all this code will be available on GitHub and you can find the link down below. So check that out. And yeah, thanks very much for watching. If y'all had any doubts, please comment down below. I would love to help out. I would love to help you out if you're stuck with any Raspberry Pi questions or issues. Please like, subscribe, all that jazz. Until then, you can learn anything.